Hi, I'm Michael Artsis. This is Sports.com. Joining me in studio, Sidney Rice, an NFL star. Thanks for joining us. No problem. So tell me a little bit about growing up in South Carolina and what that was like and how you first got into football. It was pretty cool. I started playing football at a young age. I believe I was seven years old when I started and continued to play uh, throughout my whole whole career and uh, made it to the NFL. But started I played my high school football in Gaffney High School, South Carolina. I'm um, a 4A school and we have the most championships in the state of South Carolina. I thought wow. I would say that. <laughs> did you win a championship while there? I did. My senior year we won it. Um, my junior year we won it in basketball and we won it our senior year in basketball as well. So we won it in football and basketball my senior year. Now did you get a ring for that? Yeah. I got three rings in high school. Wow. Now I imagine that that's pretty amazing. Like, Especially when you're a high school player. You don't know if you're going to make the pros and you've got yourself a ring. Yeah, it's, it's all fun. High school sports is, is all fun. Um, I encourage the, the younger athletes to, to stay, stick with it um, throughout their high school career and you never know where it could take you. Um, get a scholarship, be able to play on the next level and see what happens from there. Now, you play in high school. Did, when you first started playing, did you play wide receiver immediately? No, I didn't. Uh, I actually played quarterback at first, and going into my 10th grade year, um, they wanted me to play varsity quarterback, and I didn't think that was what I wanted to do anymore. Um, I had started watching receivers, um, Chad Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald, Terrell Owens, those guys, and um, I thought I wanted to be a wide receiver at that point. So I made the transition, going into my 10th grade year, started playing receiver. And who did you emulate? Which receivers did you watch that got you wanting to be a receiver? Uh, the guys that I just named, uh, of course, Jerry Rice, the greatest of all time. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald was my favorite when I was in high school, um, throughout college. He's still one of my favorite players now. Chad Johnson or Chad Ochocinco, Ochocinco whatever yeah. you want to call it. It's Ochocinco for now. What, but what do you what do you call him when you when you see him? <clears throat> Chad. I just call him Chad. <laughs> yeah, it's Ochocinco for now. But um, if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard the other day he's going to change it, it back. Yeah, he's going to change it back to Johnson. I think that that happens a lot to people who change their names. Yeah. Uh, they they wind <laughs> up going back to their original name. Now you went on to USC. Yes, University of South Carolina. What was that like? It was a great experience for me. Um, I was recruited by one of the greatest uh, college football coaches in Lou Holtz, and um, I got to spend my first year with him. I redshirted. I didn't get to play any games, but um, he's a great motivator and. After, after my first year, my red shirt year, um, they brought in Coach Spurrier, so that was pretty exciting for me. Do you think that uh, your red shirt year was humbling and a good experience for you? Uh, most definitely. Um, I got to learn more about the game and uh, what I was supposed to be doing. I had, I had a lot of fun uh, in college and just the whole experience, but um, red shirting is kind of tough. A lot of people get down when they do it, but it's not always a bad thing. You can always use it to learn more about the game. This is Sports.com. We're joined by Sidney Rice, the NFL great uh, wide receiver. Sidney, um, tell me a little bit about when you first walked onto the field for the first time, what that was like in the, in the NFL. Uh, it was crazy. Um, starting my OTAs, uh, going in with uh, Adrian Peterson, those guys, it was, it was kind of crazy. He's been my roommate ever since, uh, ever since my rookie year. Um, made him out in Arizona. But the first day of practice, it was it was cool. I was a little scared, a little nervous, didn't know what to expect. But as I got in the groove, I started to learn more about the game, and um, I'm happy with the decision I made. Well, it's, it's, it seems like you're, you're doing amazing, and it's a, you've had an amazing career so far. You're a very exciting player to watch. What about your speed? You are, like, the fastest guy on that field, mm. and, you, and you make some... And you make some of the most spectacular catches. What what would you say about that? Uh, maybe the catches. I'm not one of the fastest. We got we got a couple of fast guys on the team. What chain. is your forty time, by the way? Uh, I don't even know. Around four four nine, somewhere around there. Oh yeah, but so you're slow. Got, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> the game game speed is totally different. I just wanted to let everybody know that out there. But um, we got a lot of fast guys on our team. Uh, starting with Percy Harvin, he's blazing. Uh, Adrian Peterson, Bernard Barrian. It's a lot of fast guys on the team, so it's exciting uh, being in the arguments with those guys about who's the fastest. What about the catches? Have you ever had a catch where Brett Favre comes to you and says, man, I can't believe you made that catch? Uh, it's happened a couple of times, a couple of times. Um, whenever the ball's in there, I feel like it's mine. I've said that plenty of times before, but I feel like it's mine, and I use my basketball what's ability. It, what's it like having a guy like Brett Favre, this guy you, I'm sure you watched growing up, uh, you probably, when you were a quarterback, wanted to be like him or emulate him. And 
now you're playing alongside this guy, and he's throwing you the ball and then says, I can't believe you made that catch, kid. Uh, it's a great confidence boost. Um, you definitely need that in the NFL. And hearing it from a guy like Brett, a legend, 20 years in the game, 297 starts consecutive. And some people don't even make it uh, to 297 games, period, in a career. So it's, it's great. Um, I had a great time with him while I was there. A lot has been made about how hard he throws the ball and that receivers break their hands and their fingers. Your, your hands and fingers look pretty good. Uh, I shook your hand before, a very strong handshake. Are you glad you got Favre at the tail end of his career so that your, your hands, uh, can still, you can still use them for the rest of your career? Don't get me wrong, he still throws the ball hard, <laughs> uh, very hard. I remember when he first got there, uh, the first couple of days, I didn't catch any passes from him. Uh, but I, I remember one he threw and kind of overshot the receiver and it bounced and hit the wall. It actually went through the wall in our indoor facility. So I was kind of nervous till I caught that first pass. Did you, did you call your mom or your family or your friends and say, hey, I'm, I'm playing with Brett Favre. I just caught a pass from him. What was, the, what was that like, I mean, the first time? Uh, no, I didn't call anybody. They called me. <laughs> <laughs> they had to remind me I was playing with Brett Favre. But as I said before, it's a great experience. He's a great guy, um, a great player, as you know. And I learned a lot of things from you. Sidney Rice, you're a true gentleman. I want to thank you for coming to sports.com, for coming on air here in our studio live. Uh, you fans are watching on our site, sports.com, and on Ustream. And I know we have this big announcement that Sydney wants to make today. It's, it's an exclusive announcement, and it's very exciting. And I, I want to ask you a couple of questions about it, but I want to let you tell the fans what you're about to embark on, a really amazing experience. Uh, I have the opportunity to go to China with um, – a couple of my colleagues, Jack Brewer and uh, David Klein. So we're going to go over there on Thursday and stay for 10 days and see what that experience is like. And I know that you guys, when you're there, are going to be looking at a little bit of art. Uh, you're going to go to Hong Kong, Beijing, a couple of other spots. What are you looking forward to most? I know the, the art scene there is, is really picking up and becoming popular. Yes, most definitely. As you know, Dave and Eli is big in the art, so we're definitely going to check out a couple of art galleries. and. Um, just all the amazing things there. It's a lot of things to see there. We're going to go to the Great Wall, to Forbidden City, and uh, who knows what else we may get into over there. Now, this is your first time out of the country, yes. out of the United States, with the exception of the U.S. Virgin Islands, so you and I have that in common. <laughs> we won't after this week. But, um, what, uh, what is it like, and how did you decide that China was the place to go? Um, I had talked to Dave uh, last year uh, about China. He said it's a good place, and he think I would really enjoy it. And, has a lot of connections over there, so we get to go to all the places that I just named to you. So I told him next year I'm in, and uh, Jack Brewer got him to go this time. So it's, it's going to be a fun trip. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great trip. We're looking forward to seeing some of the footage on sports.com. And in addition to that, I'm looking forward to, to having you do a couple of reports, if we can get an Internet connection while you're there. Uh, maybe Definitely. we can Skype in uh, while you're there, and that should be exciting. Um, do you think that there's one aspect of the trip that you're looking most forward to other than the 18-hour uh, plane ride? That's one thing I'm not looking forward <laughs> to. Uh, I've been thinking about that ever since I booked the ticket for the trip, uh, the, the long flight. So, um, Dave said it's going to be a lot, a lot more things that's going to uh, have me overwhelmed than a plane ride. So it should be, like I said, a great experience. It should be exciting, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's an up-and-coming uh, emerging marketplace and, and emerging co uh, country, so it should be really exciting. What about what you like to do off the field? What do you do for fun? Are you into gadgets or you into reading? What do you do for fun off the field? Um, of course, everyone loves the gadgets, and uh, I like to I like to play basketball. As I mentioned before, I played in high school and um, still play now. I, I love basketball actually, and also I bowl occasionally. Uh, have my own we were talking about that yesterday. Uh, we're about to go to the John Starks bowling tournament, and you were a basketball fan of his yeah. when when he played basketball. And uh, you know what what is it? Well, first of all, what is it about basketball that draws you in so much? And can you dunk? Because I always <laughs> think if I was as tall as you, I I would be able to dunk. Because that's 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 my thing. I'm short. I would love to dunk. Well, I don't know. I've loved the sport ever since. Um, I started playing when I was 12 years old. I started playing football first, and with my brother, my older brother started playing basketball. That's when I started playing, and I actually liked it a little more than football, but ended up playing in the NFL, obviously. But uh, I can dunk. <laughs> you have a move? Uh, 
we'll save that for the next show. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the court and we'll do a little something. All right. That sounds good. I'd like to see it. And, and what about bowling? So what's your average score, would you say? Uh, around 185. I'm not that good. I'm, 185 I'm still is pretty there. good. Yeah. That's a pretty good score. Yeah, and I want to uh, take this opportunity to challenge Jack Brewer. Um, to, to a bowling, bowling match. to bowling. Yes, yes. He says he's good. Yeah, I've heard. I want to play. I saw him at the Clowney, the David Clowney bowling event uh, about a year and a half ago when Clowney was still with the Jets. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, he made Sanchez and Clowney look like fools. <laughs> so we'll see. Okay. But it could be interesting. All right, yeah, definitely. All right. Sidney Rice, uh, let's give out your website real quick and, and have <laughs> people uh, check that out. Uh, the website is sydneyrice18.com. Um, while we're over in China, I'll be blogging about my experiences there. And also follow me on Twitter, at Sydney Rice. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us here in studio at sports.com in New York City, on top of the world. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming Thank in you. studio. I'm Michael Artsis for Sydney Rice. Thanks for joining us. Check us out at sports underscore media on Twitter and sports, S-P-O-R-T-C-E dot com. I'm Michael Artsis. Be terrific.